This is Math 142. We're doing uh, part two of section 7.2. We're going to keep working with these sum and difference formulas, and uh, but we're not going to look for values on the um, on the unit circle to find values. We're going to just be given some situations, and then we'll evaluate things like sine of theta plus plus phi, or cosine of theta plus phi, or tangent of theta plus phi. So. Um, this symbol right here gets a lot of use in mathematics. Some people call it phi, some people call it phi. It does, it's okay. Um, we're just going to use it as a variable right now. So theta and phi, and these are uh, these are just some values. So notice that I want to find sine of these two angles added together. I know that sine of the first angle is 12 thirteenths, and it terminates in quadrant 2. Tangent is 3 fourths, and it terminates in quadrant 3. And... Let's see, if I think about sine of these two things added together, that would be this relationship right here. Sine of u plus v is sine u cos v, same operator, cos u sine v, right? First one, second one. So that means if I want to find that, I need to find both sine and cosine of both of these angles. So I'm going to sketch them. Um, 12 13 doesn't show up on the unit circle for me, so let me do a sketch here. It's in quadrant 2, and since this is sine, I can think of sine as opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 13 and that's 12. <coughs> now notice I'm doing that out of convenience. If I was just sticking in the unit circle, that would be one and that would be 12 thirteenths and I'd have these fractions to deal with. Again, I'm just, I'm just doing that because like I said, it's convenient. So if I want to find this value, which I will need for cosine, I could do uh, Pythagorean theorem, and that would mean that 13 squared minus 12 squared is going to give me x squared. So that magnitude is 5, but I have to be really careful about my direction. Notice it's going back, so that's going to be a negative 5. That is a subtle point that is really important in these problems. That's why I told you it was in quadrant 2, because as you know, it could have been in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. We're not arc signing here. We're just saying sine of some value is 12 thirteenths. Could have been here, could have been here. But since we know it's in quadrant 2, we know that that is, that is the case. So sine of that first angle is 12 thirteenths. And that means that cosine of that first angle must be negative 5 thirteenths. So we know sine and cosine. For theta, let's figure it out for the other one. It's in quadrant three. So now let me look at this second angle. And I know that I have rise over run, so or y over x. So this would be three and this would be four. And hopefully, uh, for a second here, you're like, wait a minute, this is going down, this is going over. So that should be a negative four and that should be a negative three. It's in quadrant three. Because if it has a tangent of 3 fourths, it could have been going this direction as well. Notice we needed that. So that gives me uh, those values. Oh, I'm going to need that r, that hypotenuse. So let me use Pythagorean theorem. Now if you're going to do this on your calculator, make sure that you put the negative in parentheses and square on the outside, because the negative is being squared as, as well. If you just do this, your calculator is going to tell you negative 9, and that's not what negative 3 squared is. This only squares the 3, doesn't square the negative. So that R value is 5, that hypotenuse is 5. So then we know that we have sine and cosine of the second angle. Sine, negative 3 fifths, opposite or Y over hypotenuse, over R. And cosine is that X value over R. So I have all of these now. I have sine of both these angles, cosine of both these angles. That's this expansion right here. So I can just look it up or, or I know it either way, but I know that this splits out to sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, same operator, cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. And I know these values, they're right here. That's why I found them. So let me plug these in. So sine of that first angle is 12 thirteenths. Cosine of the second angle is negative four fifths. Cosine of the first angle, negative 5 thirteenths. Sine of the second angle, negative 3 fifths. And now I just have some arithmetic to do. I just have to do some, uh, some multiplication. 
and I will get there. So this would be negative 48 over 65 plus negative times the negative is positive, 15 over 65. So if I add those together, negative 33. So there's my sine value. So the sine of them added together is negative 33 over 65. Let me do the cosine one then. So that expansion is going to be this one right here. So we know that it's cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, opposite operator. So that's plus, so minus. Sine of the first one, sine of the second one. Plug those in. Cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, minus sine of the first one, sine of the second one, and again, just arithmetic to do. So uh, five, negative five times negative four is positive 20. Negative 12 times negative three is negative 36. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So it looks like I get 56 over 65. So before I go on to, to find tangent, I just wanna do a little check and make sure that I'm, I'm right on these. One thing I, I do know is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So if I were to go my sine value plus my cosine value, d6 over 65, that should equal one. So let me check that on my on my calculator and see if it see if it works. So negative 33 divided by 56, uh, I'm sorry, 65 squared plus 56 divided by 65 squared. Whoops, I'm going to need the parenthesis here as well so I can insert it. Equals one, yeah, good. So that's pretty good evidence that I'm on the right track. Now to, to find tangent, I could, I could use this formula. I was already given tangent of this. I already know that, that tangent of this angle is 3 fourths. I also, this is a pretty easy tangent to find out once I have it all drawn out. It's rise over run, so negative 12 fifths. So what I could do is I could plug these values into, into this formula. The other thing I could do is I could take advantage of knowing that, that tangent of some angle is sine of the angle divided by cosine of the angle. So that means that tangent of this would be sine divided by cosine. It would be negative 33 over 65 divided by 56 over 65. And the 1 65ths cancel out. They divide each other out. So tangent would be negative 33 over 56. And if you don't like that idea of like the 65s just cancel each other out, remember this is division. When you divide by a fraction, you can multiply by its reciprocal. There go those 65s, negative 33 over 56. Now let me point out a couple things that, that just went on. We had this angle and this angle, but we didn't actually figure out what the actual angles were, right? Like I didn't go um, arc sine of 12 thirteenths and actually figure out what that is in degrees or in radians. I didn't need to, I could do this indirect. So I had some angle and I added the other angle to it and then it terminated somewhere. Now I'm going to claim that this, if I add these two together, this will in this case end in quadrant four. How do I know that? Well, I know that cosine is positive. So if cosine is positive, I must be going in a positive direction, the x way. And if sine is negative, I must be going down, which puts me in quadrant four. So notice I can look at the, the sine, the S-I-G-N, the kind of the parity of these. And if sine's negative, it's going down. If cosine's positive, it's going to the right. That must be quadrant four. So I can tell what quadrant it's in just by looking at which one of these is positive and which one's negative. So let's do another example. So I'm told I have these two angles, uh, u and v, sine of u is 3 fifths, cosine of v is negative 7 25 and they both terminate in quadrant two. 
and then I want to find the exact values of all of these. So again, notice I'm not going to be finding the actual values of u and v. I don't need to. I don't need to. I can get to them through my cosine and sine uh, values. So in quadrant two, if I have u, if sine is three fifths, that means I have this. So I can get to that x value using Pythagorean theorem. So I know the magnitude is 4, but I know the direction is negative. So that's a negative 4. So sine of u is 3 fifths, and cosine of u is negative 4 fifths. I better make this legible because I want to want to refer back to it. Now let's deal with v also in quadrant 2. I'm not sure exactly where. But I do know that cosine is negative 7 25 So this distance is negative 7. This distance is 25. That radius is 25. So I can get that y value like this. So this is 24. And I notice it's going up, so it is positive. So sine of v would be opposite over hypotenuse, y over r. And cosine of v was given to me. But here it is, negative 7 over 25. So let's find this first one. Sine of u plus v. I know it can expand it out this way. So sine of the first one, cosine of the second one. Same operator. Cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. And I know those values. They're right here. So sine u is 3 fifths. Cosine v whoop, is here, negative 7, 20 fifths. That's an ugly 7. Sorry, but it was. Cosine of u, negative 4 fifths. Sine of v, boop, 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 24 20 fifths. So then now just some arithmetic to do. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 5 times 25 is 125. Negative 4 times 24. Negative 96. Add that together. And I get negative 117 over 125. So sine of them added together is that. Let's do cosine. So with cosine, here's my expansion. Cosine of the first, cosine of the second one. Opposite operator. Sine of the first, sine of the second. So let's see. Cos u, negative 4 fifths. Cosine of v negative 7 20 fifths sine of u 3 fifths sine of v 24 20 fifths arithmetic time so 1428 3 times 24 72 so i do that subtraction i get negative 44 6 20 fifths oh 6 25 sorry it's 125 sorry about that you probably were like what is he doing he was making a mistake. So let's do a double check with our calculator on these values. Uh, negative 117 divided by 125. I'm going to square that thing. I'm going to add it to... And you don't really need to put the negatives in there because they're going to get uh, squared and turned positive. I'm just doing it because they're there. That's one. Yeah, so that's pretty good, pretty good evidence that it, it's probably right. Now to do tangent, I could find these tangent values, plug it into that tangent value, or again, tangent sine over cosine. So negative 117 over 125 divided by negative 44 over 125. A negative divided by a negative is positive. 125, this 1 over 125, 1 over 125 will cancel each other out. So it should be 117 over 44. So looking at this, if they're both negative, my result is going to fall into quadrant 3. So last example like this, same sort of setup, but notice now we're going to go sine of alpha minus beta, where we're going plus before. And this one isn't going to be quite as neat and tidy as the other ones, but I do want to show you this type of problem. So um, for these expansions, we're going to need sine and cosine at both angles. So I'll do a little sketching. Uh, alpha is in quadrant 1 opposite is 3 and then the uh, hypotenuse is 7. 
So I can find this side right here by using Pythagorean theorem. And square root of 40, that is the same as 2 root 10. Right? If I split up that square root of 40, that's 4 times 10. They're both still being square rooted. Square root of 4 is 2. Can't square root uh, 10 anymore. So it's 2 root 10. And if I think about that direction, it's going to the right, so it is positive. So sine is 3 uh, over 7. Cosine of it is going to be 2 root 10 over 7. Let's get a sketch for B. It's in quadrant 4. Beta, I should say. 2 over 9, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, or x over r. And we want to get that y, so we can Pythagorean theorem that as well. So this length for y is, is root 77. And it's going down, so it's, so it's negative. So that means sine of beta must be negative root 77 over 9, y over r. Great, let's do these, these expansions, sine of alpha minus beta. Now you have to be super careful on, um, on the signs, S-I-G-Ns, of these. So let's, let's do this out. Uh, sine of alpha minus beta, that's this relationship right here. We know it's sine of the first one, cosine of the second one. Same operator, cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. So then we can um, substitute those values in for all of these. And we know, we know they're all up over here. So let's do that. So now I've got some arithmetic to do here. 3 times 2 is 6. I have a negative times a negative, so this is going to end up being positive. 2 root 10 times root 77 is 2 root 70, uh, 770. 10 times 7. And that is all over 63. So there's my sine value. It looks like it's a positive value. So we know that uh, this sum is up. So it's either in the first or the second quadrant. So for cosine, we'll do this expansion right here because it's because it's cosine. And we know it's cosine of the first, cosine of the second, opposite operator, sine of the first, sine of the second. So now that we know what goes where, we can substitute in these values from over here that we found. So cosine of alpha... And again, it's arithmetic, arithmetic time. 2 root 10 times 2 is 4 root 10. Plus, if I have a positive times a negative, this is going to be negative. So this will actually be minus 3 root 77 over 63. And finally, tangent. Now for tangent, we could find tangent of both these values, plug them into this equation, uh, this formula. Or we could just go sine over cosine. If we go sine over cosine, the, the 60 thirds are going to cancel out. It's going to be something that's equivalent to this. Now, one note on going this sine over cosine route versus this tangent formula route. The, the form that you get your, your equation in is going to be different, uh, depending on which route you go, even though they're, gonna, they're equivalently, equivalent numerically. Um, there'll be different values if you use this formula than if you just go sine over cosine. Give these all these problems a try. Post any questions you have in the forums. Message me if you have them. And uh, have fun.